This video picks up after you've finished all your rasping and filing. So we're going to start with 100 grit sandpaper underneath a smaller half round file. And the file lets you concentrate the pressure so it takes wood off pretty aggressively. This will get rid of the, the scratch lines from the previous file. You can also use a rigid sanding block like 100 grit or a rubber backed sanding block. And here we are working the other side. We work at a variety of angles. Uh, as usual, the transitions at the headstock are going to take you a long time because there's a lot of complexity there. And you can see here we're working twice speed at different angles and blending whatever we did there into the rest of the body because there's probably a little depression from doing so much sanding in one place. And there we're blending and transitioning at the same time. This is all with 100 grit or 120 grit. And the other one. Check your uh, the feel of it frequently uh, with both your hand and your eye. Now we're switching to 150 grit. This is optional, but it, the shoe shine style is a very easy way to clean up your surfaces. You'll need to do that um, probably five times up and down the neck like that. Don't work in one place, that's the difficulty. And now we switch to 150 along the grain. Any cross grain sanding will produce very visible scratches, even at 150 grit. So we use the same grit, but we sand along the grain to get rid of those scratches. And the other transition. Now 180 grit to get rid of the 150 grit scratches. We're just progressively going up in size. And around now you, you should have a neck with some minor flaws, like there's a little divot on the left side, scratch from a file perhaps. And now we have to go back to 100 or 120 grit to get that out. That's, on, that's a half round file on the, um, to concentrate the pressure. And then I blend that uh, into the rest of the surfaces because I probably put a little flat spot there. And then I go to 150 grit and then 180 grit. Okay, now we work at the transition to the body. That pencil line is very important because we don't want to go beyond it. Uh, I start with a file and get the basic profile I want. And then as usual, uh, we're going to transition to a sandpaper like 100 grit. Get rid of the file marks, smooth it out. That's a half round file on the other side. 150 grit. And now it's 150 grit along the grain and then you'd finish up with 180 or 220. Checking the width of the nut. I do that at this stage and, and narrow the nut if needed like that uh, because you might have sanded the nut narrower in the prior process. Uh, if you work, that makes a flat surface and that narrows the nut itself. So I'd actually invert the order of those. Now to check the fit of your uh, neck to your body joint. If it was too wide, you would take it to the belt sander and um, narrow that. Just be careful. Okay, we want to one more time check concavity of the neck. Uh, no more than a 64th concavity. Definitely not convex. If you needed to flatten your fretboard, for instance, if it was convex, you would do it like this, concentrating the sanding in the middle. This is just to make the fretboard look good. It's probably got some nicks and scratches. Uh, some pencil marks. Lots of pencil marks, actually. So we're going to get rid of those. More pencil. Okay, now we're sanding up the headstock. I start on the sides. You want to do all the flat surfaces first, and we want to do the headstock veneer last because that's the best, the most important for aesthetics. So we're doing all the flat surfaces. That's 150 grit I think I'm using. I'd probably finish up with 220, but 150 may be fine. Now we do the headstock. Okay, and that, that was the body, the side of the body joint. Once all the flat surfaces are done, you can do some chamfering. And that corner is very important, and of course the other side, because your finger is going to spend a lot of time there. I would actually suggest 150 grit. That 220 took quite a while um, to put a, a reasonable chamfer there. Okay, we're doing more corners. It doesn't make any sense to do corners until you've done all the flat surfaces, because 
if you do a corner and then you do a flat surface, you just wiped out the radius you made. So you had to do more work. Just knocking off all these sharp corners. The sandy block I like, but there's a lot of other ways. In that little region, the block's not practical, so you have to go to regular paper. A sanding strip works well. And finally, we're sanding the back of the body joint and getting rid of the burn marks. That's that chamfer. You can see the burn marks there from the sander, and they're going away. And we'd finish up with uh, 180 grit or so. And rounding over the corner.